Okay, so today what we're going to look at is uh, the adrenal glands. Now, the adrenal gland is made up of uh, two layers. You have the cortex and the medulla. Uh, today we're going to be looking specifically at the adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex is broken up into three sections. Um, first, you have the glomerulus, which is the outermost section. Uh, then you have the fasciculata. And then finally we have the reticularis. Now each layer is responsible for secreting a specific type of hormone. Uh, the glomerulus layer secretes aldosterone. Uh, the fasciculata layer receives glucocorticoids. Uh, <coughs> glucocorticoids. Uh, such as cortisol. And then uh, reticularis is going to be secreting uh, androgens. Um, there are certain uh, types of hormones that uh, can affect these. Uh, the, one of the things that affects glomerulus is going to be the antithrombin 2. And also, increased potassium levels can, can directly affect glomerulus and that can activate aldosterone. Now, um, fasciculata and reticularis are both activated by ACTH and to a certain extent CRH, which comes from the uh, hypothalamus. Um, so this is overall what we're looking at. Now, drainage is uh, also a little interesting. Um, each uh, adrenal gland has slightly different drainage. So what we can see is for the um, right, adrenal, uh, right adrenal gland, which is right here, it goes straight into the inferior vena cava. Whereas the left adrenal gland <coughs> is going to go into the left, adrenal ve left renal vein, which is then going to go into the um, uh, inferior vena cava. So uh, that's what we have there. Now let's talk a little bit about, um, from the biochemistry perspective, uh, how these uh, various hormones are made and, and, and made and the enzymes involved. So the main enzyme involved is uh, cholesterol. Now cholesterol can come from two sources. Um, it's either going to come from LDL, which is about 80%, or it can be made endogenously through acetate. And depending on what the uh, situation, the cholesterol situation is in the body, it will do one or the other. Uh, now, immediately, cholesterol will become uh, uh, pregnenolone. Uh, this is mediated by a very, very important uh, enzyme, desmolase. Uh, this is occurring, and desmolase is found in the mitochondria, um, and it's going to be um, controlled by a few uh, hormones. One is going to be ACTH and antithrombin 2. So both of these will increase the re uh, activation of desmolase, so you have more conversion into pregnenolone. Now also, there is a uh, antifungal drug, ketoconazole, which can negatively inhibit this, and so then you get a decrease in uh, aldosterone from corticoids and even um, the androgens. And the, of course, with uh, ketoconazole, um, those, uh, you have those side effects related to those three. Um, <clears throat> now, once it becomes pregnenolone, um, it, can, it can go further down and become progesterone. Uh, it, can come, it can go further down and become 11-deoxycorticosterone. Um, and then it's going to become corticosterone and finally aldosterone. Now let's let's uh, plug in the enzymes here. Uh, to go from pregnenolone to progesterone, that's going to be the three beta hydroxylase enzyme. Here we have the uh, 21 hydroxylase enzyme, and here we have the 11 hydroxylase enzyme. Finally, to go from corticosterone to aldosterone. Uh, we're going to have an enzyme called aldosterone synthase. Aldosterone synthase is only found in the glomerulosa layer, and it's um, and is going to be activated by ant, uh, angiotensin two. So angiotensin two has effect on corticosterone, uh, sorry, aldosterone synthase to produce aldosterone, and also desmolase to uh, start the whole process. Um, now, pregnenolone and progesterone. They can be further 
move on, uh, can, they can be uh, activated by uh, 17 alpha hydroxylase, both of them, to become uh, 17 hydroxy pregnenolone and 17 hydroxy progesterone. So you get both of them, and this can go down uh, as well, and this uh, go to, goes down to become 11-deoxycortisol, uh, which can then go down to become cortisol. Now the interesting thing is, um, the same enzyme that brings pregnenolone to progesterone brings 17 alpha pregnenolone to 17 uh, hydroxyprogesterone. And the, tw the 21 alpha, uh, alpha hydroxylase, which brings progesterone to 11 deoxycortisol, cortosterone is also the same one that brings 17 hydroxyprogesterone into 17 deoxycortisol, and finally there. So here we have protection of cortisol. So obviously, this is occurring in the uh, zona fasciculata. Uh, and that's where we're making our glucocorticoids. Now, this can then continue. Uh, to become our androgens, which is going to be the reticularis layer. 11-pregnenolone um, uh, is going to become um, DHEA, dehydrox, uh, and that is dehydroandesendrione. Uh, and 17-hydroxy uh, progesterone can become androsendine. And again, DHEA can be converted to this by the same enzyme that is moving all of these things. Uh, Androstendione can then become testosterone, and testosterone can become DHT with the help of an enzyme, 5-alpha uh, reductase. And uh, we do this is uh, there is uh, DHT is known for causing BPH and even male pattern male pattern baldness. And so we have a drug that blocks this, which is called uh, finasteride. And that's going to be used in these, uh, both of these conditions. So this is going to be happening in the uh, reticularis. Now, um, interestingly enough, uh, androstendione uh, in the periphery can become estrone, and testosterone uh, can become estradiol. The enzyme responsible for this is aromatase, and that's generally found in the periphery in uh, fat cells. And so this is, occurs in the periphery. Now, um, what we're going to talk about now is some of the diseases associated with the enzymes. Um, key enzyme where you have problems is the 11 alphas. Uh, the 21 alpha hydroxylases and the 11 alpha hydroxylases. So uh, deficiency in these enzymes will actually cause shunting. So um, let's just begin with uh, 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency. So when you have um, 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency, uh, you cannot make any androgens here. So the first thing we're going to notice with this deficiency is going to be a decrease in androgens. So if you have a decrease in androgens, um, that's obviously going to lead to uh, feminization, virilization. Now what else can you not make? Well obviously you're going to have a decrease in cortisol. So um, if you have a decrease in cortisol, of course, you're going to lead to an Addison's type disease. And what, what happens is, uh, because you have a decrease in cortisol, your Addison's, you're going to get an increase in ACTH, which is then going to promote more cholesterol and become pregnenolone, and that's going to all go into aldosterone. And so, this will lead into hypertension. So, with um, just a quick summary of uh, 11 uh, alpha hydroxylase, you have hypertension and virilization. Okay, so, um, so this is one of the main ones. So again, 17 alpha, hypertension, virilization. Um, the other one we're going to be looking at is going to be 21, the next one here, 
it's going to be 21 alpha hydroxylase. So 21 alpha hydroxylase deficiency Now, what you'll notice here is, is you cannot go down to aldosterone or cortisol. Instead, it gets shunted to making androgens. So in, in this case, we have a high amount of androgens. And so this leads to masculinization. And you're going to get a decreased cortisol which leads to, of course, an Addison's type syndrome. And again, that's going to increase your ACTH, which promotes more uh, formation of androgen, and you're going to decrease your aldosterone. Now, when you decrease your aldosterone, you're decreasing your sodium level, you're, that's going to uh, increase your potassium level, uh, you're going to decrease your ECF volume, which is obviously going to decrease your blood volume, and this is going to decrease cardiac output, and you can eventually get into shock. So this is a very, very important uh, enzyme. So here what we have, we have hypotension and you have masculinization. Um, the third syndrome uh, is going to be, uh, and by the way, 21 alpha hydroxylase is the most common. And 17 uh, alpha hydroxylase is very, very uh, uncommon. Uh, the last one is going to be 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency. Now here, this is going to be one step below 11. So here, obviously, first thing you notice is the same thing as in 21, you are going to have shunting towards uh, aromatase. So you're going to get increased uh, androgens, and obviously, uh, this is going to lead to masculinization as earlier. The other problem is you're not going to make any cortisol. So you're going to have decreased cortisol, which is again going to give you an Addison's type disease, and it's going to increase your ACTH. But let's look here. Um, you are able to make 11 deoxycorticosterone. And 11 deoxycorticosterone does have a weak aldosterone effect. And although it's weak, because we have increased ACTH, uh, ACTH here constantly uh, increasing the level of desmolase, we're going to get an overproduction of deoxycorticosterone. So you actually have an increase in aldosterone activity. And of course, we all know that all increased aldosterone is going to cause hypertension. So in this one, uh, just a quick summary of this, is going to be hypertension and masculinization. Now, a good, great way to remember this is, um, is if there is a 1 in the tens digit, uh, then there's hypertension. And if there's a 1 in the 1's digit, then it's masculinization. So this is a um, great way to remember the symptoms related to these.